Hello, my friend. Welcome to the lecture of web protocols. In this lecture, I will teach you everything very clearly about World Wide Web, HTTP, what is this protocols, what they are doing. Generally, we will learn all of them. Let's start with the World Wide Web. So when the people saw this World Wide Web, which is we calling it like WWW, that your company name which is this is ip uh, so ip package then dot com this is the top of the uh top of the uh, ip package so let's let's think about domain name i mean type of top of domain name the another one which is your company name will be like second domain name anyway so this uh what is this www and World Wide web what does it mean? Everyone's saying for that, like, this is internet, but this is not internet. This is working in internet, okay? This is part of the internet. It is not internet. Like, just saying, if there is no, no have World Wide Web, internet not will collapse. So this is just part of the internet, but this is important protocol, okay? Okay, anyway, let's start it. <clears throat> Um, okay, when most of us talk about using the internet, we are typically talking about a specific part of the internet, the World Wide Web, www, or simply the web. The web is massive network, web pages, programs, and files that are accessible via URLs. URLs. Okay, mm. so we call it a web because of its west interconnectedness starting from the url such as http then i told you the wikipedia.org so the org here top of the domain name wikipedia second domain name which is company name or another things group of team so we can follow links to eventually read millions of web pages from from across the globe here is a teeny, teeny portion of the portion of that web from 2004, 2004. Okay. So if you want, I can make it a little close. Yeah. This is Wikipedia, and it's just going spreading every place. Let's go. Continue. Yeah, powered by protocols. This is now we will uh, separate our topics. We'll learn all of the details. A web browser, which is powered by protocols. A web browser loads a web page using various protocols, various protocols. The first one, the one we can say, it uses the domain name system, which is DNS, which is I was explaining everything about it, domain name system. I showed you all of the details, which is they are normally IP packages. Just we are for the human readable, we don't them like domain, like some words, okay? From ASCII codes, we just turning it. So protocol to convert a domain name into an IP address. So normally they are IP address, okay? They are not protocols, okay? Let's come down for that. Uh, second, it uses the hypertext transfer protocol, which is HTTP. This is to request, so I mean HTTP to request the web page contents from that IP address. This HTTP is very important. Why, you know, just you sometimes you're bringing some information with it or you're posting that. So let's continue like what you will learn. What is this hypertext uh, transfer protocol? But step by step, we will go. It may also do, use the transport layer security, which is TLC, transport layer security, layer security. So protocol to serve the website or a sec secure encrypted connection. So this is very helpful. The web browser used these protocols on top of the internet, 
protocol. So every HTTP request also uses TCP and IP, which as I told you, TCP for the uh for the secure of the messages of the package ip packages is just helping to 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 reach the uh, the end of the point so tcp helping to make them save uh, to informations with the ip okay it's working with the ip tcp is very important protocol at that point to help to bring information with the safe way like i showed you acknowledgement and there are some uh, some together comprehension like the one point tagging information is saying yes I got it then it's sending another point saying yeah I got it too it's like there is some understanding well <clears throat> let's calm down uh, we'll say now the web is just one of the applications built on top of the internet protocols but it is it is by far the most popular okay Let's start with the domain name DNS. IP addresses are how computers identify other computers on the internet. Okay, IP addresses aren't particularly human friendly. Yeah, I told you. Tough, tough. Um, who wants to memorize an IP address like 74, 125, 20, 100, uh, or the even longer, like IPv6, which is alternative addresses. The domain name system, DNS, gives us humans an easy uh, way to identify where we want to go on the internet, on the internet, right? <clears throat> okay. So we simply type in a domain name like www.wikipedia.org. So, and our computer connects us to the computers powering Wikipedia. Okay. This is, which is why, what I mean, HTTPS at www.wikipedia.org. Uh, okay, let's come down. A domain name is a human friendly address for a website, something that is easy for us to remember and type in. Okay, this is for us, the computer checking IP packages, IP addresses, okay? computer not working like us they are checking ip uh, numbers like in the binary system or things okay yeah let's look anatomy of a domain name this is important each domain name is made up of parts like which is i told you third level domain second level domain top level domain top level domain is here what you know which is, I told you, .org, .com, uh, .organization, I mean, that .company, uh, .net, like network, .net, blah, blah, blah. So they are little, they are really top-level domain. They are not more. They are little. This is second-level domain, which is your company name and like Amazon, Amazon and Facebook and Instagram and, and other companies, which is we putting for the second level domain, but they are all IP, IP addresses. Okay. So just check there will be like 75, 24, maybe 128, but they are just, we were writing there something like Amazon. Okay. This is IP addresses. We are just converting it from ASCII codes. Okay. The third level domain will be our www point okay this point will be first so third level domain i mean now we can say www dot second level domain will be amazon dot top level domain can be like uh, com company there are a limited set of level domains tldc so we calling top level domain here we talking about it and many websites use the most common tldc dot com dot org and dot edu like education so the second level domain is unique the company or organization that register is uh, like wikipedia or khan academy i told you so the third level domain is called the subdomain subdomain because it's owned by the same group and that url often directs you to a subset of the website like m.wikipedia.org like mobile 
optimized Wikipedia as Khan Academy of like Spanish language Khan Academy. Okay, it's just representing what is starting like www or s or some, something like that. Now let's check domains and IP addresses. So it's just we'll, we'll look for this. Let's look together. Let's go a little up. <laughs> yeah. Domains, IP addresses. Behind the scenes, each domain name maps to an IP address when we type a URL in the address bar, address bar of our browser. The computer has to figure out its IP address. So I mean this point, okay? The computer can store a database of more than 300 million domain names locally. So it goes through a multi-step process to find out the IP address. Okay. Step first, first step, check the local change. Okay, catch. If you visit the website once, there is a fairly good chance you'll visit it again. Yeah, it, it will save there. That's why computers keep their keep their own local charge of catch of domain name to IP mappings. The charge the catch stays small because it kicks out domains you you haven't visited in a in a while or domains that send down expiration dates. Okay, in the Chrome browser you can view the database yourself. Just type Chrome. Uh, not than this thing. So let's, if you want, let's try it with me. Okay, we can try together. If you want, so you will see there. And this is Chromium, which is I'm using that. It's not Chrome. Yeah. Yes. Now we can see clear host chat, chat, sockets, domain security policy, policy, proxy events. You can see all details. Now it will, uh, so you can check the all details here. But this is not Chrome. This is Chromium. For that, you cannot see it. Let's go to another step. You can write it like that, okay? Don't worry about that. It will show it to you. So here's a snippet from my browser catch. So which is ipv4 which is this ip address ipv4 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 this is for gut reads so this is gut reads this ipv4 google analytics this is for for him google for the google uh, and google lead services this is for google lead services normally so if you compare them gut reads will look like that for computer so domain and IP addresses we calling here, like you just checking what they are doing. What are they like? Step two, ask the ICP uh, internet service provider. This is very important. Catch. So every ICP internet service providers provides a domain name resolving, resolving. This is helping to find the domain name in the internet for search service and keeps it on catch perhaps you never visited a particular website but your neighbor just did so the icp can look up the domain name mapping from their visit if it is not in the icp catch then it's off to, to the next step step three now we, we learned about also about icp as the name servers, servers, there are domain name servers scattered uh, around the globe that are responsible for keeping track of a subset of the millions of domain names. The servers are ordered in a hierarchy, which is root name servers, root name servers, TID name servers, host name servers. Now we will see all this step, okay? Like top level domain, this one, this one, this one, host name servers. This one is root name servers. Okay, let's look. Okay, now I will go down. 
The ICP starts by like internet service provider starts by asking the root name service, hey, which name service knows about our domains? I told you the root name service will be here dot com dot org or dot anything dot edu. Okay, edu. I do like so education. I mean, the root name server responds with the IP address of a TLD name, TLD name server that tracks dot org domains. Like what internet service provider like domain resolver here ICP will ask. Like this is org domains. It will send some request and it will say root name servers, which as I told you, I can show you here, the root name service this point, because ICP will ask step by step. So the first one, the ICP will ask for the dot org, like the for the for the first point, okay, for dot org or for this point. Then it will ask TLD name servers, then it will ask for host name servers step by step. Don't forget it. This is important point. Okay. Next, the ICP asked the TLD name server. So who knows about Wikipedia domains? The TLD name server responds with the IP address of a host name server that contains the Wikipedia. Like, then it will ask, this is Wikipedia domains. Like, it is Wikipedia. Is that Wikipedia? Then TLD name servers, top level domain name servers, will give message like it will say this is that like this is real ip we, because we want to reach this ip okay like 199 this is our main like main reach i uh, main to reach id uh, ip addresses it will say yeah you can go this uh, ip with this through this uh this numbers ip addresses okay so it will say, yeah, this is that the TLD name servers. It will make route. It will make way to go the first point. Then it will get it. Then finally, the ICP asked the the host name server. Okay, so where is Wikipedia? www.wikipedia.org. The host name server responds with an exact IP address, which is I told you this one before there. It will say this is so IP, ICP domain resolver will ask like www.wikipedia.org. Is that true? The, this IP, I mean, it will send this real IP. Now, this is our real IP addresses for all of them. Hostname server will give this message. The ICP sends the IP addresses back to the requesting computer and how our computer can successfully connect with the computer powering that domain. Like what? Like it will say, this is that, like I will go there. So this point, wikipedia.com, it will say like, yes, you can reach this point. This is true. This process just for, uh, for apply, like we are in true way, right? Like that, okay? Yeah. So if that sounds like quite a process, yes, it is. But don't worry, it's not uh, done that often. A lot of information is cached along the way. So it's rare that a DNS lookup has to go through with so many steps. When a lookup does have to go through all the steps, there are multiple name servers that can answer each question. So a computer doesn't have to wait lo too long for a response or worry about a name server going down. Yeah. Like we, uh, we, are, we had the domain name system since like 1985 and it's called Scala. Uh, scale it uh, impressively to match the growth of the internet thanks to its hierarchy redundancy and catching them in. Now the important step starting, okay? Hypertext transfer protocol. Before we, we saw www, word like that, we learned. Now we will check what is this hypertext transfer protocol because Every day you see it. Every day. Now, if I showed you here, you will see again HTTPS. <laughs> okay, we'll speak about HTTP 
S2 as the security is more security than HTTP. But let's <coughs> don't make confused. It will not make too much sense for now because in the future, if you learn more about that, so about the computer science basic fundamentals, then you learn everything clearly. Okay, let's start. Whenever you visit the web, you, you visit the page on the web, your computer uses the hypertext transfer protocol to download that page from another computer somewhere on the internet. Let's step through that process. Okay, let's learn how they are doing it. The first step direct browser to URL. When we want to browse the web, we can use many types of computers like laptops, desktops, and phones, as long as the computers has a browser application installed, okay? The users either types of uniform resource locator, which is URL, uniform resource locator, in a browser or follows a link from an already open page, which is we calling it like that. Notice something about that URL. It's so also you can learn what is it? Uniform resource locator. Okay. This is some location. Like I mean you can think like that. So it starts with HTTP that's a signal to the browser that it needs to use HTTP to fetch the document for that URL. Just just think you want to get some information from this link like from this uh, url i mean okay you want to bring some information from there it's like www.amazon.com then you can see there we have some point we're saying like register register or login or i don't know some extension there like for the pages like index.html or index and anything there okay we just want some information with the http we're saying like fetch then be opening there something like it's saying get from index.html some information anyway let's go on i don't want to make you confused about that uh so let's go okay uh fetch the document that from url like what like that it is let's come here i will make it a little bit slow because it's not looking clear Okay, let's say for that it will be like four. Yeah. Mm, if I go a little bit left, maybe, yeah. So I think you can see it like index.html is there. Let's loop it if I can. Yeah. You can see www. So http www.example.com that then index.html. No we taking or we requesting from this point this from in index html because this is html file we bring in information from there okay like how we doing that with the http request like with the fetch i, I mean let's go on okay sorry this is not too much clear maybe for you but we'll go step by step don't worry about that it's saying host our host is www.example.com which is uh, tld top level top level domain it is second level domain and third level domain you know already like yeah internet service provider asking first peer first the so first here then second here and the third and all of them okay for the ip anyway the index that HTML point this is very important because we will bring information from there. Okay. What browser are you using? Let's ask. What browser are you using now? What's the URL of this website? What does it start with? Let's look. HTTP www.figma.com and this is our like index.html. This is our extension here. This is here like we have top level domain figma our second level domain and www here our third level domain internal service provider asking the step by step all of them so the, here we have file this is like index.html okay the another this point again like that the another untitled node will be again our another uh connecting page okay 
They are all of them like HTML file. Step two, browser looks up IP. We typically type nice human friendly URLs into browsers like khanacademy.org and wikipedia.org. Those domain names map to IP addresses, the true location of the domain's computers that are handled by the domain name system. Yes, the browser uses DNS resolvers to map a domain to an IP address. I told you like before. Now let's, let's look steps. Now DNS resolver here. First, it's asking like www.example.com. It is true. DNS resolvers say like domain name server. Uh, so it's saying, yeah, this is this IP address. Like the example mean is this IP address. Okay. This one is this one. Example, I mean. Example, the second domain name, uh, second level domain, it's here like 93. And I like that. It's asking that and DNS resolver say, yeah, 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 this is example. Yeah, this is IP address of him. Okay, let's go. Step three, browser sends HTTP request. Okay, let's check what is the step. So once the browser identifies the IP address of the computer hosting the request URL, it sends a HTTP request. Now it's saying get index.html because uh, it was checked it was checked it like this is example.com this is true now it will look for the it will try to bring information with the http request okay it's saying get index.html like i will make little close i will zoom it get index.html http 1.1 this 1.1 very important because we want to get information from the first page like from the first extension the host will be that host name will be that okay the this three step like top level second level domain and the third level domain okay this is our what we want to bring with the http for bring information index.html.http 1.1, like 1.1, okay? An HTTP request can be as short as two lines, like get index HTML, HTTP 1.1, host will be like that. I told you, you, you learned all of them, right? The first is the HTTP verb get there are other verbs for other actions on the web like submitting from from data right like post we can say post or we can say get or blah 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 anything we can do with it so http just our our way to bring things for the request the next part specifies the path like index.html the most computers stores the content of the entire website so the browser needs to be specific about which page to load. The final part of the first line specifies the protocol and the version of the protocol. This is important. The final part of the first line, this one, I mean this one here, I will show it to you. Yeah. This one, right? Uh, I was hover it. So the protocol and version of the protocol. Okay, don't forget it. The second line specifies the domain of the requested URL. So this one again here, the requested URL that's helpful in case a host computer stores the content for multiple websites. It can be 1.2, 1.3 for about information. So I told you, what is that? The first one is the version. So the second one is specified the domain of the requested URL. Okay, don't forget it. Step four, host sends back HTTP response. Okay, once the host computer receives the HTTP request, it sends back a response with both the content and metadata, metadata about it. Like what? It's saying HTTP 1.1, then 200, okay. 
like we get from their like information like 200 words or anything like that anyway it can be anything there okay like it's it's saying a knowledge like it's okay i accept it it's true so the http response starts similarly to the request like http 1.1 200 okay the response begins with the protocol and version like http 1.1 the next number is the very important http status code status code like this one i mean here and in this case it's 200 like i'm talking about here the http status code this one okay like 200 so it is 200 that code represents a successful retrieval of the document like okay so if the server failed it, sorry generally you can see there 400 for like file not found if the server filed to retrieve the document the status codes provide more information like if the failure was due to user error or server error for example the most well-known status code is not is uh, 404 file not found that happens whenever you visit a path on a server that doesn't correspond to any document like this is not true like you writing there's some uh, bad or uh, like uh, not consistent URL, like you're writing arbitrary things wrong, then it's just bringing you some bad information. Since, uh, okay, uh, since users have a habit of typing URLs incorrectly, 404s happen frequently, so websites often have fun. 404 web pages try typing a nonsense can kind of academic URL and see what happens. The next part of an HTTP response are the headers. They give the browser additional details and help the browser to render the content. These two headers are common the most requests, like content type, text HTML, charset, UTF-8, like you can see in HTML file, you can run it in some point. Content length 208, I told you. So let's come here. The content type can be everything. Don't forget this is information. This information very important. The next part of an HTTP response are headers. They give the browser additional details and help the browser render content. So these two headers are common most uh, sub content type. Text HTML. It can be anything different. Church at UTF. It can be image HTML or anything. Okay. The content type tells the browser so what type of document it's sending back. A common type of a web is text HTML as well. Web pages are HTML text files. Yeah, generally. Other types are possible like images, match PNG. You can see also like that. Videos, video and pack. Like that too. So HTML representing text. I mean, script application like JavaScript can be like that. And anything as you can load in your browser the content length gives the length of the document in bytes so content length uh, gives the length of the document in bytes which helps the browser know how long a file will take the download which is yeah finally the http response writes out the actual document request that this web page is a simple html file yeah this is HTML we're putting inside it, like have some hierarchy over here. And we're writing head, like title, example, domain. This is our uh, title of the page. I mean, okay, like here, like it will be www.exampledomain.com. And we have uh, head, uh, first head, like example, domain, then paragraph, the domain name is used to illustrate their example and documents in the body. I mean. Step five. Uh, the browser renders the response. Let's look for the details about it. Yeah. Step five, the browser renders the response. The browsers now has all, uh, has all the information, um, uh, has all the information it needs to render the document request. 
like example domain I told you like before index HTML. I told you like before, this is which is we, do, we did like this in head. So this is in body example domain and this one, this is our uh, the title, okay? See for yourself, okay? Many browsers include debugging tools that let you view HTTP requests and their response as you browse the web. Browse web, right? Let's try it in Chrome. First, we need to open the Chrome Developer Tools. You can try it, so I'm not open it, but you can try it. One way to do it, that is the open the view menu, which as you can say, like from here, which is sorry, not here. Mm. Yeah, from here you can do it. Like, let's do from here. Which point? <laughs> no. So, mm. yeah, maybe like just do from here. Okay, inspect, then go the details. Okay. Hmm. Developer tools, ones that like select the network tab. When you inspect it, when you enter inspect, then you'll see there some point elements, console sources, network performance, memory, application, all of the details about the page. You can click network. You'll see there network. Okay. Next type a URL in the browser bar like www so that example.com index html and http request shows up in the console and the browser renders the page so like that it will render it like for a second you can see it's saying load in for like 44 millisecond it will render it i mean okay content loaded we can dig into that request to see the juicy details if you want to click index.html under the name column tab interface pops up and defaults to header step you can see all of the details about that like when it don't load it so you can see requested url is that example.com index.html request method get like Bring status code is 200 from disk charge, like status code is too much important. Remote address, it will be what? IPv6, you can see here. Yeah, IPv6 and refer, referer policy, then no referer and that, something like that. Accept branch, change control and content encoding and content length all of the tiny bit details like text html which is type of the content if there's some image then it will say like image then mpeg the response headers response headers includes headers discussed about discussed about like content type and content length which is i'm talking about here the actual html content of the response another type of top response Mm -hmm. in another tab which is talking about here response you can see the details of things like content type text html charts that open up the network tab and browse the more websites how many http requests does each website mac http request does each website mac what types of content are in the response what surprised you you the most Okay, if you want, let's try something with me. Let's say inspect. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go up, you can see the details here, but let's go mm, network. Yeah. This is that. Right, let's call it. 
things recording like look it's working fast when you do something it's saying let's say back or click another things like like say I want to go YouTube it will call let's look at the tools and things working here if you try yeah it's coming issues and problems and everything is coming clearly it's loaded right all details coming yep all this here the resource and everything if you go elements you'll see there all the things again html you can see the html details here all of them here if you want let's go sources our index here again you can see the details about that yeah this is which is telling us telling us about details let's look it's saying the type length and things all of the details here believe me return and all about index okay youtube.com and other information well, okay that's more i'll go to another step step by step we need to go http and tcp ip http is a protocol that's built on top of the tcp ip <coughs> tcp ip is still working in that process time like what each http request in inside an ip package and so http requires is inside an ip package and each http response in inside another ip package or more typically multiple packages packets since the response data can be quite large okay it's saying get index html http 1.1 .1. then another to for request like it is true is asking question this one is saying acknowledgement like it's true then it's saying again like 200 the status code is true is that true like this one is sending to here then this one saying yeah that one true like the first this is asking like this is that this is one saying yeah this is true like i accept it then again it's saying but i got it like it is 200 status code right then it's saying yeah that's true they are doing some understanding to each other there are many other protocols built on top of tcp ip like protocols for sending mail like smtp pop imap and uploading fast ftp like ftp all of these protocols enable us to use internet to connect with other computers useful ways to useful ways to the communicate and collaborate across wide distances okay now we will look for our web protocols practice questions jolena navigates to w so https www.nationaltrust.org.uk in her browser and sees the front page it looks like that okay like you can see the details is here the website includes a logo, photos, and interactive slideshow and custom font. Which of these resources are load, loaded using the hypertext transfer protocol? So which of them it's saying loaded using the hypertext transfer protocol? Like the HTML of the web page, the custom font file, each image file the slash show javascript library the logo which one 
The website includes the logo, photos, and interactive slideshow, and a custom. Which of these resources are loaded, loaded using the hypertext transfer protocol? Which of these resources are loaded using the hypertext pro protocol? Choose all answer. That's not only one answer. Many more answer. Which one is true? What do you think? Okay, the HTML of the web page, that's true. The, the custom font file, that's true. Each image file, that's true. I told you. The slideshow JavaScript library, which is application script, that's true. The logo, also true. The all answer, true. Let's get it back. Okay. The second question, Aurora typed this URL in her browser, in her browser's address bar, https www.nssl.noaa.go. After five seconds, the browser loaded the web page, okay? Which of these protocols were used by the browser fetching and loading a web page? Choose all answers that apply. Okay. What we're we using here? Like, it's not SMTP. It's not working here. FTP, no. Yes, we have IP. Top level domains. TCP also checking the truth the, the, to be sure. HTTP staying there for bridge to get information, right? So thank you. So this one, IP TCP and HTTP, the true. Because our question here, very clear, which of these protocols were used by the browser in fetching and loading the web page? IP TCP, HTTP working in this situation, protocols. Okay. Many people worry about what what would happen if either the internet or the World Wide Web went down if they suffered a complete outage and were unreachable. Which of these predictions is correct? If the World Wide Web went down, the internet will also go down since the internet relies on the web www protocols. I, I told you it is not true. This is lie. This is not true. Because it is not that. If either the internet or the World Wide Web go down, the other system will not necessarily go down as well as they are fully independent of each other. What do you think? Do you think it's true? You can think. If the internet went down, the World Wide Web would also go down since the www relies on the internet protocols what do you think if either the internet or the world wide web go down both systems would have to go down together since they are no it's not that okay this twins for what do you think about them if either the internet or the world wide web go down the other system will not necessarily go down as a as they are fully independent to each other. If the internet went down, the World Wide Web would also go down, since the WWW relies on the internet protocols. That one true answer. This is false. Okay? This one is true. Because World Wide Web living in internet okay internet is the big in the circle i mean if you think like circle the internet we can represent it like what you know like that check it like this is like internet let's say this is internet and this is world wide web here okay just think like that I hope you got it. The, 
Okay. This is all of them. Another lecture will be about the internet quiz. This is that for this point. I hope you get enjoyed. Let's go up what we see, what they did. We saw DNS, HTTP, how they are working. We learned all of them fundamentally, not maybe with the details, but we know what they are, what they are doing and how they are working, right? They are important protocols. They are helping us to reach some website. Yeah, they are human readable. So IP addresses, which is domain names, that's all. Yeah, this is all web protocols. Okay, this is end of the, this lesson. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you'll enjoy. Have a good time. Another, another lecture will be about uh, Internet Quiz 2, which is we will finish it this topic 2. We will start another scalable system. So we'll go step by step.